Here we have a molecule of 2-methylbutonine, and what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial is looking at predicting features of the hydrogen NMR spectrum, and I'm going to look at predicting three distinctive things. First off, how many peaks do I expect to see? And that's going to be based on the number of hydrogen environments. Then I'm going to look at what's the ratio of those peaks to each other. Finally, we're going to look at that splitting pattern. So what is the splitting pattern for each individual peak into those sub peaks that I expect to see in an exam question? So let's take a look at this 2-methyl beat one in. Okay. So I'm going to first identify how many different hydrogen environments I have. And actually, this one's quite simple to do because none of these hydrogen environments are equivalent to each other. So if I give them all little lowercase letters, that should maybe make it a little bit easier to see. This is definitely one environment. It's not equivalent to anything else on the structure. It's a completely standalone CH2 group. There's nothing else that is exactly like this. There's nothing in a completely equivalent environment. So that's its own little peak. That's its own hydrogen environment. And the same can be said for this CH3 just here. You might look at that and think, well, that's a CH3 as well. But they're in different environments. This one's bonded to a CH2, and this one's just bonded directly to this double bond here. And so they're definitely different from each other. So let's call them B, and let's call them C. And then finally, I've got this CH2 group. Again, that's a CH2, but it's totally different from this one. So I've definitely got four different non-equivalent hydrogen environments just here. So that means I would expect to get four different peaks. Now, what about ratios? Well, my peaks of A to B to C to D are going to be in ratios to each other depending on how many hydrogens there are within the environment. So A is going to have two, B is, there it is, is going to be three, C is going to be three as well, and D is going to be two. So the ratio of the individual peaks to each other is two to three to three to two. I don't know if they'll be in exactly that order on the chemical shift scale, so that's on the x-axis when we're looking at the hydrogen NMR spectrum, but I can say that there will be this ratio of those peaks. But I'm not looking at the chemical shift scale in this tutorial, I just want to identify the environments, the ratio, and then the splitting pattern. So, next up then is the splitting pattern. So we're going to go to each peak one at a time, and what we're going to do is we're going to travel to the next carbon up, and we're going to count how many hydrogens there are on that next carbon up, and that's going to give us a value of n, and then I'll show you what we do with that in just a moment. So I'm going to go from this environment first, and I go to the next carbon up, and, well, there's nothing there, is there? There's no hydrogens directly on this carbon atom just here. It just leads to other carbons. So unfortunately here, our n value for environment A is going to be zero. Now, that's not a bad thing necessarily. It just means the peak isn't going to look as impressive as it could be because what we're going to see for A is using our n plus 1 rule, which is now 1, the peak that we would expect to see for environment A is just going to be a singlet. And I know it's a singlet because that n plus 1 equaled 1 this time. So let's go to environment B then. So for environment B, I'm going to go to the next carbon up in the chain and the same thing's happened again. So here, once again, I've got absolutely no hydrogens here. And so N for this one is another zero, meaning that this peak would also be a singlet. So I would only expect to see one individual spike or one sub peak just there for this particular environment. So far, there's not a great deal of splitting going on in these splitting patterns. Let's go to D and hopefully we'll see something useful there. Yes, I'm deliberately doing D before C because I've just read it in the wrong order, but it doesn't matter. So for D just here, we're going to go to the next carbon up and we've got bad news again. There's nothing going that way. But when we go this way, we can see we've got one, two, three. So we've got three hydrogens in here. Now for environment D, that means that N is going to equal three. So N plus one is going to be four. And so what that means, finally, I've got a splitting pattern. D is going to be split into what we call a quartet. And so, so far, I've got a singlet, a singlet, and then for D, I've got this quartet shape. Let's have a look at the next one. So the final splitting pattern I'm going to be looking at, I'm going to go out to the next carbon up, and I've got one, two, so I've got two carbons just there. That means for C, it's going to be N plus one equals three, and this time I've got another, and thankfully a different splitting pattern, 
I'm going to see that the peak for C is split into three sub peaks, and that's because it's going to be a triplet. Hopefully that takes you through the molecule nice and easily. You can see a skill that you could use in the exam there to give you some confidence. And it means if you are presented with a molecule, you'd be able to predict the kinds of peaks you'd expect to see. And it's a great way of checking your answer at the end of those big spectra questions. There's lots of full walkthroughs for spectroscopy on my channel. So click the links on screen now. And don't forget to give this video a like, please, before you go, because it really does help support my channel. And until next time, happy revising.